Hey, this is David. Today we're digging into a Samsung electric dryer that's acting up in the moisture sensing cycle. If yours keeps running way past dry or quits way too early, you're in the right spot. We're gonna zero in on the moisture sensing bars and the control board to figure out what's going on. Could be something simple, could be a little sneaky part, but either way, we'll track it down. Before we jump in, Hit the like button if you've been chasing weird dryer behavior lately. And if do-it-yourself fixes are your thing, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss what's next. All right, let's get into it and get that dryer working like it should. With over 2 million products in stock and the know-how to help you do it yourself, we are AppliancePartsPros.com. For today's work, we'll need a Phillips head screwdriver, a multimeter, a flathead screwdriver, rubbing alcohol, and some cleaning rags. Also, please remember that safety comes first. Be sure to unplug your electric dryer or switch the breaker off. Sensor bars almost never need replacing unless they've been bent, broken, or had a close call with a screwdriver. At the end of the day, they're just two strips of metal, nothing fancy. Here's how it works. As wet clothes rub across the bars, the moisture completes the circuit. The board reads that and keeps the cycle going. Once the clothes dry out, there's no moisture to bridge the bars, so the board gets the signal to shut things down. Simple, but smart. On this model, both wires from the sensor lead back to the control board. To check the system, start by removing the two screws from the back of the console. Unplug the connector and set the console aside. Pop off the board cover. Grab your multimeter, set it to continuity, and place your probes into the pink and orange terminals. Now wet a rag and lay it across the two sensor bars. If you hear a beep, You've got continuity. That tells you the sensor bars and the wiring are doing their job. If you'd like to know more about how to use a multimeter, I've put together a comprehensive tutorial for you, so check out the link in the description. If the dryer is still acting weird, grab a rag with a little rubbing alcohol and wipe the bars clean. Dryer sheets and fabric softener love to leave behind a nice invisible layer of gunk that messes with the sensor readings. Clean bars mean better drying and fewer headaches. Quick heads up, those sensor bars only kick in during the auto dry cycle. If you're running time dry, they're just along for the ride, completely inactive. Now when the auto cycle isn't working right, it's usually something in the moisture sensing system going sideways. That's where these sensor bars come into play. If you've already checked the moisture sensor circuit and the wiring looks good, no breaks, no shorts, then it's time to turn your attention to the control board. More often than not, that's your troublemaker. Here's the kicker. The board doesn't actually send voltage to these bars. It just watches and waits, checking if the circuit is open or closed. Basically, it detects when damp clothes are making contact. If the board isn't picking up on that, odds are it's done. After we ran through the sensor system checks, we found the sensor bars just needed a good cleaning. Here's how we handled it. All right, just because I'm a nice guy, I'll show you how to actually pull the moisture sensor bars out and clean them properly. Now, you don't have to remove them from the lint filter housing to clean them, but I'm going to anyway, you know, for the overachievers. Start by popping the top of the dryer up. Sometimes a good tug does it, or you can slip in a flathead screwdriver. Lean the lid back against the wall gently. We're not breaking drywall here. Now, remove the six screws holding the front door panel. Take out the lint screen. Unplug the door switch and set the whole panel aside. Remove the three screws that hold the blower housing. Set it aside. Now, remove the three screws from the front of the lint screen housing. The two on the outside are longer. Make a note of that. 
Then get the single screw from inside the housing. When that's done, unplug the moisture sensor connector and lift the whole housing out. Now disconnect the two sensor connectors. Grab your flat blade screwdriver and gently pry the sensor bars out. Don't bend them. To clean them, just grab a rag with some rubbing alcohol and wipe down both bars. If they're looking real crusty, you can use a bit of steel wool carefully to get them shining like new. Here's the old moisture sensor bars and here are the new ones. If you've already got them, great. If not, you can pick them up at AppliancePartsPros.com. All right, it's time to button this thing up. Start by feeding one end of the sensor bar into its slot, then press the other end into place. Should snap it clean, don't force it. Reconnect the two wires, and while you're there, tidy them up a little bit. Drop the lint screen housing back in, line it up, and lock it down with the three screws. Don't forget the sneaky one inside the housing. Plug the sensor connector back in so it can actually do its job. Now, reinstall the blower housing with its three screws. Slide the lint screen back in. Next, lift the front door panel into place. Plug the door switch back in and install those six screws. Put them back in place to hold everything together. Position the top back into place. Reconnect the control panel, tilt it back into place and secure it with the two screws. Done and done. Turn the power back on at the breaker or plug the unit in. Add some wet clothes and turn it on. We want to see how things are going to work. Once you've figured out what's causing the moisture sensing problem on your Samsung electric dryer, grab your model number and head over to AppliancePartsPros.com. You'll find the part you need fast, and most orders show up in just a couple of days, so you're not stuck waiting around with a pile of damp laundry. When your new part arrives, follow our step-by-step -step install guides to get it swapped out. Nothing too fancy, just solid info to help you finish a job with confidence. And hey, once you've got everything up and running again, let us know how it went in the comments. We always like hearing about a good repair story. Thanks for watching, and thanks for choosing AppliancePartsPros.com. See you in the next one.